Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast. I'm excited to welcome my co-host, Kim Sorrell. Kim, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest. And this topic is such an important topic to cover, isn't it? Oh, my word. It's so true. It's so true. I can't wait to dive in. And uh, we have Christopher Cruzen, who is a writer, a director, has done so many things and is so talented. And then now this movie that has come out uh, from your book that he wrote the book. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, doing the movie. I mean, it, it's amazing. You're amazingly talented. And so uh, let me have my son. I can't wait to start talking about it. Christopher, welcome to the show. And I'd love to hear your inspiration behind the show and the movie. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. I, I've said many times before, it's still true. It's frankly a story I never would have wanted to write, you know. It's a story I'd rather not tell because it deals with suffering and tragedy, if you will, with my son's um, mental illness. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia around 16, 17. And then at the age of 18, he had to be civilly committed to the state mental hospital in Virginia. And it just, yeah, he, 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 was, he, he is my firstborn child, you know, the apple of my eye. And to see, see that tragedy it was it was almost too much to bear, but I felt after the years had passed, you know, maybe by telling his story and chronicling what happened with not just him, but with his family, I might be able to help others who are going through something similar and help them understand they're they're not alone in their suffering. It's very difficult to deal with something that painful in your family, especially going through something that you're like, I've done everything right. And why is this happening to me? Did you question that when it was happening? Yes, I did. Uh, not, not, at, not at first, because at first I thought, well, this is just an attack from the devil and I will fight with spiritual weapons and God will heal my son, you know, almost a kind of superficial approach well-meaning a well-meaning approach but not a particularly deep one and yes i i reached a point where i was very very uh, disheartened disappointed became a bit like a job in a sense where job reached a point where he just felt well clearly god doesn't care enough to change this situation and just feeling kind of on his own, alone. That's I got to a point where I felt somewhat abandoned. Though I wasn't, but that's how I felt. Yeah, well, I, I can certainly understand why you would feel that, that way. You know, we have these kids and we have these dreams for them and can picture them older in life and having families and having kids and doing all the things that, that we wish we did or that we did and... And it's a loss of a dream, really. I would imagine there had to be some grieving involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, you described it very well. Um, that's, that's the process I went through. And he, he was a child that showed such great promise. And as a doting father to some extent, yeah, I had the future all mapped out. <clears throat> He was a great athlete. He was a handsome young man. Everything just sort of fell apart. And, but I won't say that, you know, it, 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 or let's just put it this way. I have to admit too that, you know, I'm, I may have failed in some areas. I'm open to, to correction there, but I know that I tried. I tried with all my heart to be a good father. And so it was very, uh, very disappointing and it was a, it was a real blow so then you decide to write about it that's even more of a challenge right and now into a movie so like yeah. your process of doing that and say i'm going to write about this was it therapy for you to tell the story yeah to some extent and the 
the genesis of the book is really more or, or less of a book per se, and more of a collection of letters that I was sending out to friends, just a few friends at first, and then the group grew bigger and bigger. And I was ask, I was giving them updates on what was happening with my son and asking them to pray uh, for his situation. So it became a kind of ad hoc prayer group that grew into the hundreds. And I saved those prayer letters, which were written over a period of years. And I came to the point where I felt, well, let me let me publish these letters to, to help others. Um, I discovered early on that whatever insights I began to develop, people were responding to me saying, thank you for sharing. It meant a lot to me in the trial that I'm going through. Uh, you have ministered to me. You have helped me. And so I began to think, well, you know, rather than clamming up and staying silent about this tragedy in my family, perhaps by sharing it, I can help others. So that was really my intention. It was it was written to help others, and it was cathartic for me. Yes, it was cathartic for me to put it together in a book. And the movie, yet another catharsis, I suppose. The movie was not something I envisioned doing right away at all. Several years passed after the book was written before I even thought of making a, a film version out of it. Yeah, well, I so appreciate your courage, your generosity, your transparency to write the book. Mental illness, there's such a stigma, unfortunately, still in 2023, yet mm. it affects so many people. Like, I think I read one out of five children mm. are affected by uh, mental illness. And so it's in all of our families in one way or another, yours extreme obviously. And so to share that, I'm sure it's going to help so many people. And I'm curious when you were writing these letters, like reading the first one and reading the last one, mm -hmm. uh, what changed? Wow. That's a great question. And, and the change was very, very fundamental, deep, a deep change. I would have to say in the beginning, I'm kind of like a guy blowing a trumpet <laughs> and and you know, rallying the troops. Here we are. We're gonna we're gonna gather together, and pray, and bring down the the kingdom of of the Satan and exalt the kingdom of God. And Daniel, my son, is going to be miraculously healed. And then, how many years go by? Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, probably at least ten years to the last letter, and it's much more subdued. It's much more nuanced. It's much, there's much less of anything resembling me and much more of just God, I'll put it that way. Um, um, an awareness that God never abandoned me. He never abandoned me. I'm, I'm here to say he never abandoned me, even when I may have felt that way at times. Uh, and and secondly, he, in a way, has invited me, he invited me through the whole process to enter into his world more and more and more, because I really do believe it's when we suffer in life uh, and are vulnerable and honest in admitting to that suffering that we, we, we can develop a much more intimate relationship with God we walk closer to him because he's familiar with suffering and acquainted with grief you know it's all through the Bible and and so in a way though I would again would never ever want this would never have wanted this to happen the fact that it did happen there has been great good also that has come from it and so I choose to focus on the good that has come from it and, and give God thanks. And that's the powerful thing that you learn from this process, how you grew through 
any loss or tragedy or difficulty, we grow as human beings. Yes. So there's no growth without suffering or difficulty. Or, or may challenge. I say, may mm -hmm. I say that sadly, some people become bitter when they suffer. You know, and 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 I would pray that that no one would become embittered um, because that out that also can happen. You know, and I was tempted to to become bitter, but I chose to not become bitter. And I think that's crucial. I love the way you said that because it is a choice you, because you could have just stayed underneath it instead of getting on top of it. Mm -hmm. And in the sharing, you know, we go through things, we have suffering, we go through mm -hmm. hard times. And I always admire people who take those hard times and use it to help other people. Because you you know you're not alone. You know that there's other other families with the the same issues and uh, and and also just bringing an overall general awareness to mental illness yes. is huge. Is huge and so needed. Like I think the number is like forty five billion dollars are spent each year on medical research, and one point six billion of that is mental illness. I, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, which yeah. is, it's ridiculous, right? Yeah. You know, it's something that affects yeah. everybody, but yet such a small number in comparison to, you know, cancer research and yeah. every other kind of research mm. goes yeah. into yeah. mental illness. Yeah. And uh, I've had mental illness in my family as well. And I know how tough that can be. And, you know, when you were saying that you were never abandoned and, mm -hmm. and whatever, it made me think of your son that, he also is never, was never abandoned. He's never been abandoned. And and he has schizophrenia, but he's created in God's image and he's God's son. And God loves him just as much as anybody else. And he is just as special and wonderful and mm -hmm. and uh, individual, uh, one of a kind masterpiece, just like the rest of us. Yes, that's right. Yeah, thank yeah. you for saying that. That is true. And I talk to him on the phone most every day. Uh, he's still in a hospital, but first of all, he's getting better. He's been improving, and we're hopeful that he'll be able to go into a group home setting in the near future. And every day, every day we talk on the phone, and the first and last thing he tells me is, I love you, Dad. Mm. Mm. Those words. Yeah. And, and that's what we learn uh, through this process. How much different is the book to the movie, especially people who have read the book? Sure. That's a great question. The, well, the book is not a novel per se because it's more a compendium of these letters. Um, but I, when I set out to make the movie, I made a deliberate choice to not go down the route of a documentary or to try to be really factual. I, I From the very beginning, I took the um, approach of being um, more uh, interpretive uh, and even surreal in some respects in telling the story. So I, I there's the, a voiceover at the beginning of the movie that says a good bit of what you're about to see is, is true as it happened, but more is true as to how it felt. Mm. And, and more than that is true of how it will be. I, I really wanted to try to explain how the father in the story felt uh, and that also gave me the freedom as a filmmaker to take flights of fancy, if you will. Hey, guys, I never said that's the way it happened in, in real life, but that is the way it felt. There's a scene where the father who's gone to the hospital to bring his son home but can't find him in the hospital, and nobody can tell the father where the son is, and he's wandering around this huge hospital trying to find his son, and he thinks he sees him out in the snow just outside runs out to him and they end up dragging him back across the snow, back into the, the father, back into the hospital. And you see these two trails of blood coming out of the father's hands uh, across the snow. Well, that never happened, <laughs> yeah. but that is what it felt like. Absolutely. And so I have tried in the movie to, um, um, uh, you know, when you put a saddle on a horse, uh, what's the word? Uh, <laughs> I, I tried to 
uh, use art to convey the feeling that the father, me in this case, had in the story. So I, I hitched, I hitched um, the art to, to that, the story to that. You know, uh, you did it masterfully, I have to say, because I cried watching the trailer and mm. the emotion of just the trailer, just the two minute or whatever it is, trailer, mm. Uh, mm. the emotion just comes through strong. And it's so such a beautiful thing to see how much this father absolutely loves the apple of his eye, loves his son so much that no matter what he's going through, it doesn't matter, he's right. still his son. And he wants to be with him and wants to be part of his life. And, and uh, it can be difficult with mental illness. Sure. And yeah. What, what has that been like for you? Yeah. I, I think you hit your, hit the nail on the head when you said uh, he, he just, the father wants to be with him. I mean, nothing is going to stop that father from loving his son, um, believing the best for his son, hoping for the best fighting for the best. I mean, nothing's going to stop him. Mm -hmm. Powerful stuff. Kim has a love question. Go ahead, Kim, with your final question. Yeah, so uh, I I was diagnosed with breast cancer a few years ago, and my husband was diagnosed four months later with pancreatic cancer and died six weeks after that. Mm -hmm. And it made me question love, the real meaning of love, because God is love, but what is love really? And mm -hmm. so I went on this year-long quest to figure out the true meaning of love. I used 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind. And, and I uh, took one word a month and I was in Haiti most of the time I was doing it. I learned so much about love and the love that I see in your eyes and the love that I feel from you is huge. And I'm curious, you know, as you're thinking about the love, the love that you have for your son, the love you, that you have for him and that, is so deep and so powerful. How how would you describe or define the love that you have for him? Hmm. Oh, there's so many different ways I could approach that, I suppose. Uh, but let me try to answer your question. Um, it's uh, just, uh, it, it's unending. It's unending, it's unquenchable unquenchable how about that i love that word it's unquenchable i i mean look nothing has stopped me up until now and and i'm not asking for more to be thrown at me either please understand <laughs> <laughs> i'm certainly not but uh unquenchable mm. and and you know what that's really i've already i've already received the uh, reward the, the blessing of it all because, because I have the love. So I'm able to talk to my son. I'm able to visit him. Hopefully soon I'll be able to see him even more than I am now as he gets into a group home. But in, in a way, the victory has already been won. If you, if you, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Chris Ball, yeah, for sure. Chris Ball, where is the best place people? The film's not out yet. It's coming out when? When is the movie coming out? Right. It comes out May 24th. May 24th. We chose the month of May, which is Mental Health Awareness Month, for the premiere of the film. And then the 24th is World Schizophrenia Day, a day to sort of highlight schizophrenia. And it will be a, a, a global virtual cinema premiere. So there will be a dedicated platform, a dedicated URL that people can go to. And essentially it'll be like going into a movie theater where they will go to that website and they'll buy a ticket right there online and they'll have 24 hours to watch the movie. And that'll be worldwide. That doesn't mean everybody, in every country of the world is going to see it, but if they knew about it, they could see it because it'll be available. It'll literally be available worldwide. We're dubbing it into Spanish, Portuguese, uh, subtitling in French and German initially, and then we hope to add other languages beyond that um, as, as time goes on. 
I love that. I mean, I, I'm going to be praying that lots and lots and lots of people know about the movie and tune in, buy tickets and, and do it because people need to know what it's like. People need to know more about mental illness and have more compassion and more yes. understanding, right? So, Absolutely. yeah. So I love that. I love your timing of it is beautiful. And yeah. 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 I could just say that I would think maybe the, one of the greatest lessons I've learned through this whole travail has been, or if, it, if it's a lesson or it's just, just something that's happened to me is that uh, I, I have so much more compassion now than I used to <laughs> for, for any kind of suffering, but especially the mentally ill. And um, you said something earlier, you know, they may be troubled, but they're made in God's image. And if we can find it in ourselves to look at people of who are afflicted, you know, as having been made in God's image and bearing that stamp, you know, a lot of times people just want somebody to recognize them. Right. To say, hello, I see you. Um, a friendly touch on the shoulder. Sometimes that's all people are looking for. And there's so much stigma around mental illness and there's not enough compassion. So. Definitely. Wow. This is so powerful. We appreciate you step, uh, stopping by. Uh, I know the movie is going to do really well and everything and you're prov providing such a message and so powerful. And, uh, you know, you're doing something very special that's going to help many, many people. So for you sharing a story of such very, very trials and tribulations to be able to share this first in a book, now in a movie, you're going to change so many people's lives that get to see this and have already read this. So we appreciate it so much. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Uh, one more question. You have one more thing to add, Crystal? Oh, no. No, thank you. Okay, perfect. All right, guys. That was, uh, again, a special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast, guys. Take care.